Hi everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 14th and the 21st of July 2018. So, uh, quite some energies in the sky, huh? Uh, we have some very positive, uh, creative, emotional, spiritual uh, theme going on with the Earth trine between uh, Jupiter and Neptune and Uranus, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have all that hectic, turbulent energy with the Sun opposite Pluto and the eclipse that we experienced and so on and so forth. The squares. And we can feel both energies in our life. We could be very creative. We could enjoy life. Life could be more intense. We could feel more vital than we ever do. But yes, it is challenging. And we could go, our temper could go up from a zero to a hundred too fast. Our um, impulse can take us from, a, from zero to a hundred too fast. There's a need to be more calculated at this time, to step away a little bit from our emotions. And as we are deepening into the eclipse season, this is a time of great changes. It's a time that more people come to this plane, more people leave this plane. And in our lives there could be changes that do not correlate with time and space that the time and space that has lapsed is insignificant in, con in, in, in uh, comparison to the journey that we went through, to the development that we went through. And these could be positive or negative, and that depends how they impact your natal chart. Um, let's go down to the week, to the weekdays. Uh, the 14th is Saturday. It's a Leo moon. It's a day that could be, uh, I'm talking Central European time, just that you know everybody. And if you are living in the Pacific, in Australia, New Zealand, you just move it 10 or 9 hours ahead. If you are living in the United States and the Americas, you move it about 9 hours to uh, between 8 and 10 hours back, regarding, uh, uh, depending if you're on the Pacific coast. Then it would be 10 hours, and if you're on the East Coast, it's going to be 8 hours. And if you're somewhere in the middle, well, it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> anyway, so between 7 and 10 hours. So the times I'm stating is in Central European time. So the 14th Saturday, it's a Leo moon, and it's a morning that could be a little agitated. We could be a little aggressive or meet aggression in our life. Uh, through that morning and we have to watch it. We have to also watch it more on the roads and uh, if you're working or doing some physical activity that Saturday, it's a time that we could lose our patience more easily because there's a square to Uranus, there's an opposition to Mars. It is a good day if we are working, it is a good day to spend with the elderly or people who, are, who outrank us in some way, either by age or by rank or by position. Uh, it's a good day to take strategic things forward and enjoy yourselves with other people. The trine between Venus and Saturn is exact on that day. It's a time that we can take our need for satisfaction from our work, our relationships, ourselves, our bodies forward in a way which is responsible and sustainable and so strategic. Um, just watch out for overindulgence on Saturday night as there is a square to Jupiter. The moon is trining Chiron on that day. It's a good day to heal yourself in some emotional manner. Sunday, the 15th, the moon is in Virgo. It's conjunct Mercury and it's a great day for communications, uh, precise communications at that. It's a good day for analytic uh, uh, um, requirements and tasks and uh, the planning of projects and so on and so forth. Venus and Ceres are conjunct in the sky in Virgo 
Um, they're Queen Kong seeing Mars. Queen Kong, as I see it, is a Quranic aspect. It's about leaving, it's about purifying, it's about cleansing, it's about healing. It's about moving away from patterns that are not really beneficial for us in our lives. It's not about adding, it's about lessening, but remaining with something that is of more value to you strategically. Something very karmatic about Chiron as well. And when <coughs> these two planets, uh, Ceres and Venus, who are very much in charge of the satisfaction that we receive from what we are giving. Are in Virgo, first of all, criticism rises. We can see all the little imperfections. That's why in traditional astrology, Venus is regarded as, as a very unhappy in Virgo, as fallen in Virgo, or indetermined, I don't exactly remember, because Venus is all about satisfaction. It's about the satisfaction that we can receive from our bodies, from our senses, from food and drink, from beauty and aesthetics, from things that are of value, from our work, from money, or from our relationships and love. And when she's in Virgo, it's all work and no play, and there's all the time an, a, an, a focus on the imperfection of things, and things that need to be mended and sustained, and not the, the, uh, uh, the things that do that are up to par, that do cause us some uh, feeling of satisfaction and ease. So, um, the fact that they're queen conquering that Mars, it could be about patterns that I need to be stopped, stopping, to, to take, the, the patterns that need to stop and, and, and cease to be part of my behavior within groups, Aquarius. Or regarding folding and upgrading my life through my actions, Mars in Aquarius. Things that are hindering my forward movement, Mars in Aquarius. Regarding my body, my satisfaction, my giving, all these serious Venus subjects, relationships, Money matters. Um, <clears throat> so, Monday the 16th, I mean, if you have a day that you need to plan a lot of things for, plan it for Monday because the sky is packed. It's going to be a long day, but it could be a very successful one. I mean, the moon is conjunct Regulus, it's conjunct Venus. Venus is conjunct Regulus, and it's the moon is trining Uranus, it's trining... Uh, Saturn, it's uh, sextiling uh, uh, Jupiter. It could be a very successful day, especially business-wise, if there's things that are of honor, that are of value, that are important, that are big. It's a great day to take them forward. It's a great day to step into new ground. It's a great day to work with people and things that you believe in and be an optimist about it. But you have to be very honest about things, very sincere about things. Or else, Regulus says, or else I'll show you shame. And by nighttime, this is the time to lay it all off, to uh, ease yourself down and relax. This is a great evening, the 16th Monday, to watch a movie, go to a show, um, go outside to nature, meditate, paint. There's an opposition to Neptune. Uh, you're going to be a little forgetful. You're going to be a little uh, sensitive and uh, uh, incombobulated. So just, you know, relax. Take it easy, Monday night. Um, it's a good time for healing as well, you know, healing in new ways. Tuesday, the 17th, Moon in Libra. Uh, sensitive day, it's opposing Chiron as we go into the nighttime, Central European time. It's going to grow more intense. It's a day that we would expect to receive our gratification and strength from inside. Don't expect to get it from outside. You won't get that support uh, usually Tuesday when this happens. Um, maybe from afternoon time onwards. But before that, no support whatsoever. So, uh, support yourself that Tuesday. Don't wait for anybody else to do it. Uh, Wednesday, the 18th, there's a moon in Libra again. It's 
squares Saturn in the morning. Be careful from being too harsh of a judge towards yourself or others. Don't follow the rules too strictly, but do things right. Challenge yourself to grow up and mature. Excuse me. And, and be responsible about things. It's a day that you could take things forward with a lot of energy. It's a great day for physical activity. It's a great day for work and taking energy, utilizing your energy, because you're going to have a lot of it with a trine to Mars that morning. Thursday, the 19th, um, could be a very turbulent morning. There's a square to Pluto between the Moon and Pluto. And basically, it's not a day with a lot of satisfaction and it could be a lot of conflict uh, between the male and the female aspects and attributes, both within us, within our lives, or, you know, just people around us. And it's a day that we better talk about things. It's a great day for communication, even though it's very emotionally turbulent. If we just distance ourselves just a little and, and communicate in a logical manner, in an open manner, this could be a very good day to take things out to the open and talk about things and progress things that way. Friday the 20th, the moon is in Scorpio, intense, um, sexy, sexy, <laughs> never mind, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about minor aspect. It is opposing Uranus in the morning and squaring Mars in the afternoon. So. It's a day to be careful not to lose your temper. It's a day that we could really want to move forward and we wouldn't want to wait for anybody else. It is a good day to spend with the elderly or someone that outranks you in some way. Uh, as as uh, last Saturday was. So this Friday is as well. For business occasions, it's a good day. And Friday night, there's a Moon-Jupiter conjunction and Saturn is quintiling Neptune. It could be magical. So go out or invite people in or just have fun Friday night. And if you can, stay up because all through the night there's great aspects in the, <laughs> in the sky. And they go on until Saturday morning. There's a sextile to Venus and then a conjunction to Jupiter early morning. It's a good time to enjoy yourself. Just don't be too hedonistic. Don't be too intense. Don't be too total and obsessive about things. It's a time that we could really enjoy those subtle energies, those more tender energies. This is trying to nip on uh, Saturday morning. Go outside, go to nature, enjoy art, enjoy music, enjoy uh, and the muses, and, and, and relax. It's a great time to relax. Afternoon is a bit, it, it could be heightening ego senses in the afternoon. You have to be careful not to think that you're too powerful, and not to act in a way that is condescending or cruel to other people around you in some way, because communication lines are tangled as a square to Mercury that night. So be careful how you state things and how you um, interact with other people. That's about everything I had to say for this week. I want to thank you for sharing these videos and commenting about them and liking them because they expose these videos to more people and it's a great way that you can show me that these videos are important to you. I want to thank you for following me and giving me all the support that you do and of course for private consultations, private lessons or groups, you're more than welcome to contact me. I'm Boaz Fader and I hope you're going to have a very beautiful week and smooth sailing ahead. Take care and goodbye.